So today we're going to do the handover video on this Chasson Titanium 627GA. We're going to start on the outside and then we're going to move on to the inside. So firstly, when you come over to the passenger side, you can see that you've got your fill up points which are just in here. To access these you need to open up the door and then you can open up the access points just like so. So you've got your ad blue which is below there and then you've got your diesel which is up at the top. Whilst we're on this uh, side of the vehicle as well you'll notice that you have got Remis cab lines fitted to the vehicle. I'll call round to the other side now just to show you how they can operate. Uh, you'll also notice, uh, and I'll lift this up for you um, shortly, um, that this has got uh, the keyhole where uh, this is um, uh, fitted so you can actually release the bonnet, but I'll, I'll get onto that shortly. Firstly, coming over to the driver's side, these Remis cab blinds, all you need to do to operate is simply click the, uh, pinch the, 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 the little clip and then pull out like so. These connect via a magnetic strip and will black out the entire cab. You've got them on both of your windows and also your window at the front. Be delicate with these. Uh, I often say lead from the, uh, the, the, the bottom with them just so you can then easily connect them in because if you lead from the top they can often get stuck and caught at the bottom. And as a rule of thumb with the motorhome, if it feels like it's being forced you're probably doing something wrong so just bear that in mind. Just reevaluate uh, what you're doing. Now, just one thing that I will say before I carry on with the handover, the vehicle has not been valeted yet. Um, it needs a valet and there's a couple bits that still need to be done, but I just wanted to get this out to you just before your collection. Your bonnet, as I mentioned, you've got your, uh, your key hole here. You'll need to get your keys for obviously this to open. Put your main Ford key in there, turn it, as you can see, that releases the bonnet. Uh, and then turn it the other way to release the latch and then you can lift the bonnet up. And just like that, the bonnet is up. So just to point out a couple more things in here, the, the, the main things are that you need to know is obviously jump starting the vehicle. Um, if you jump starting the vehicle, your positive terminal is just under this red cap here with a plus sign on there to indicate it's positive. Your negative, as indicated by the sticker, just connects onto this ring here, uh, just below uh, this cover, as you can see. Uh, and that's how you jump start the vehicle. Just to point out a couple more things, you've got your engine coolant over here. You've then got your engine oil and dipstick below. Your washer fluid is next up just here. Uh, and then you've got your brake disc fluid, which is right uh, in the back there. Now coming round to the side of the vehicle, you can see that you've got your gas locker, which is in here. Opening that up. This is where your gas, uh, your gas bottle can be stored and you'll need a pigtail for that to obviously link up to the van so you can pull the gas through. Please ensure that when travelling the gas is always turned off at the bottle. You should never travel with your gas on due to safety. Moving on, you can see that you've got next up bullfinch uh, gas outlet um, so when you're barbecuing and things you need a little bayonet fitting that can connect into there that will then link to your uh, gas um, barbecue and then you're good to go uh, and that will just connect into there next up you've got your fridge vents which are, are located on the side of the vehicle here now bear in mind this is obviously where the fridge pulls its air from and that's what it uses to cool the fridge. If it is a hot day, try and keep this area in shade, uh, perhaps by pulling out the canopy or turning the vehicle away from the sun as it will just help the fridge work a little bit more efficiently. You can also get uh, fridge vent covers for these uh, vents uh, for when you're uh, storing the vehicle in winter. At the rear of the vehicle, you'll notice just by your wheel latch, you've got your first drain down point. This is your waste drain down point. Uh, there's three main drain down points in the vehicle. You've got your waste, which is here. You've then got your fresh water drain down point, which is actually on the other side. And then finally, you have got your drain down point on the inside of the vehicle, which is the boiler drain down point. Now, especially this time of year, as we're starting to go into the colder months, always ensure that the vehicle is fully drained down and free of water when not in use as you don't want to get any frozen water in this system i can't stress that enough i personally say get into the habit of doing that every time throughout the year uh, when you're not using the vehicle 
Now the wastewater is the only thing that can potentially freeze when you're not using the vehicle, when you're using the vehicle, as the tank is under slung. So what I recommend is when you are using it, simply stick a bucket underneath there and leave that tank open for all the water to drain out when you are using it in the colder months. Underneath here, you can see the pipe that links to that, uh, you know, that drain down tank for your wastewater. And you'll also notice there's a, uh, a lever here. Pull that towards you. Uh, and that will drain down the entire wastewater tank and that's the, the tank there as you can see so it's just under slung there and all the water will come out like so in the rear of the vehicle you've got your big garage uh, in here this is fully heated and insulated you can also see that you have got some 230 and 12 volt plugging points um, so a really good bit of storage you've got a light in here as well should you need it and your awning pole you'll see just on the back wall that is where it is located and secured your awning is obviously mounted to the top of the vehicle over your habitation door um, don't use the awning when it's windy because you can get a gust of air which will potentially rip the awning uh, and break it and fracture the bracket um, so if you, if you get any wind just take it in don't leave it up um, open overnight for that exact reason because you never know when you're going to get a gust of wind only use it when it's in fair weather like so what i'll do is i'll send you a separate video of that awning showing you how to use it or i can always show you on handover as well next up along the back you can see you've got provisions for a bike rack should you need it and you've also got a reversing camera right at the back there along the top of the vehicle so we're now moving on to the other side of the vehicle. Uh, this is obviously another access point into the garage should you need it. You'll notice that you've got your trauma vent here, uh, which is in essence your chimney if you like. So don't you know cover this up, leave that as it is. Moving further back, or forward rather, you can see that you've got your cassette toilet which is located in this locker here. All you need to do to empty this is simply pull up on the lever and slide out like so. Before doing so, you need to ensure that the blade on the toilet is closed. If that blade is open, you won't be able to remove that. It'll feel like it's getting jammed. If that is the case, just stop what you're doing. Make sure that that is, is closed because you don't want to pull and force this against the blade as it will simply snap it um, and you'll need to buy a new cassette and it's a bit of a faff and they're not the, the cheapest things in the world. So just bear that in mind. Now, draining one of these down is dead simple. Obviously, once you've released it and slid it out like so, you can drain it. So I'll just pop it on the floor at the moment. To drain it down, all you need to do is pull out the funnel, remove the gray cap, and using the orange button on the back, click that in. That will release an internal vacuum on the inside of the cassette, which will allow you to empty the cassette. Um, if you've got any of your blue fluid, that can go straight in the t into the top of that uh, cap, if you like, and that fluid can go straight into the cassette. Um, when you're ready to put it away, put a bit of water in here just to swill it out and obviously drain that uh, and then stick the funnel back in and then you can slide it back into uh, situ. You'll also notice that you have got this orange tab here. This does move and ro rotate. You should never need to move this. This is what makes contact with the blade and allows you to open and close the cassette when you need it. That should always stay in this position. When you're ready to put it back in, all you need to do is line it up and slide it back in until that orange handle snaps back into place there and it's all nice and secure for transit next up you've got your 230 volt hookup points so when you're on site this is uh you know where you're going to be plugging into this will allow you to have 230 volt electric in the vehicle uh, and that is just beside your convenience locker in here which i'll open up for you now within your convenience locker what you've got is on this side you've got your fuse box so if the vehicle ever trips, you know where to come to. They're all your fuses are located in one uh, place, which is nice. And your RCD breaker, so if the vehicle ever trips, you can just come to this box here, and this is your trip box, of course. You'll also notice you've got this. Uh, this is just for your uh, charger. Uh, I believe it's for your alternator as you're travelling. Uh, your vehicle battery will charge up your leisure battery. Finally... You've got your fill-up point for your fresh water tank. Fresh water uh, tank has got this funnel that slides out, similar to the cassette. Once you've done that, unscrew the cap using a food grade hose pipe. That hose pipe can then go into the tank and fill it up. When it's overflowing, you fill the tank. You can then put the cap back on, slide the funnel back into situ, and then move on to your pitch, and then you're good to go. You'll notice that you've got this big black um, 
cap here which will can be removed and, and obviously put back on that is only there if you're ever, ever needing to clean out the tank I personally don't recommend drinking out of the fresh water tank as it is plastic at the end of the day um, I personally recommend taking bottled water so with regards to cleaning the tank you won't really need to do that once a year at, at absolute max um, but that's how you do that next up your drain down points so you've two drain down points for the for the actual fresh water tank you've got a tr quick drain down point which is this little black uh, brown valve here which you can lift up this will allow you to drain the entire tank this holds about 120 litres uh, it'll allow you to dry, drain the entire tank down to 20 litres and it's a quick drain down point because the manufacturer recommend if you're travelling with water try and travel with a maximum of 20 litres due to weight load weight distribution and payload as well so just bear that in mind if you're wanting to do that flick up this brown tab click the pump on it on the inside of the vehicle and that will force water out of here and drain the entire thing down to 20 litres now if you're wanting to drain down the entire thing, say for example you're finished on site and you're ready to go home, your drain down point which will drain the entire thing is located underneath the vehicle which I'll show you now. Okie dokie, so underneath the van you can see that you've got two pipes. You've one with nothing on, uh, that is actually a breather pipe and the other one is your water bung. Uh, and that is for your fresh water tank. So all you need to do is simply push that red tab in and release the valve and that will drain down the entire fresh water tank um, and as I say like I mentioned that other one don't worry about there nothing being on there that is just for your breather pipe for the tank you've also got a pipe which is just located there as you can see which is just in front and that is your quick drain down point for when you're draining down to 20 litres but when you're on the site you'll have a big grid that you can drive over and simply drain down the tank so that completes the outside of the van, we're now going to go on to the inside. And just like that we're on the inside of the vehicle now, so as you walk in through the habitation door, um, you've got your fly screens which are here, these are on all of your windows as well, uh, so fly screens above, and then you've got blackout blinds below as well, so obviously black out the entire van. Um, as you walk in you've got your control panel, so you've got your Truma panel up at the top for your heating and then below that you've also got your uh, control panel for your lights, your pump and things like that. So turn on the lights, your master switch is just through this on button here. Select that and that will turn everything on. So turn your lights on, you've got an isolator switch there, you can see that turns all your lights on in the vehicle. You then got a pump button here, click that for when you're pu pulling water through the system and priming the tank. So when you're on site, make sure obviously you've got water in the van, you don't want to be running that, uh, if there's no water in the tank you'll simply burn it out. But when you're on site, fill the, the vehicle up with water, click that pump and that will pull water through um, the, uh, the, the fresh water tank and out your tap. Now once you've done that, go to go to your taps once you've turned that that pump on turn all your taps on including your shower on and uh, to hot what that will do is it'll pull water from the fresh water tank into the boiler and then out of the tap it will spurt and splutter it might take a minute uh, but then it's when it's running steadily you prime your system for your hot water and as I say do that for all your taps once you've done that flick it over to cold and do the exact same it'll pull water through spurt and splutter and then it'll run steadily once you've done that, you can actually leave your pump on because each of your taps have got a micro switch fitted which will activate and deactivate the pump whenever you require. Um, the only time you need to turn that pump off is of course when you're um, wrapping up and you, you're going home and you've no water in the vehicle. Now the reason I tell you to put the hot water on first and prime it through that way is if this is the first thing that you do, you've got to bear in mind that your boiler will take 10 litres of water it's not like a boiler at home where it instantly gets the water up to temperature. This obviously is going to take 30 to 40 minutes to heat up 10 litres of water. With that in mind, if you flick it over to your hot and pull that water through and put your, uh, and obviously prime your system with your hot water, when you turn your heating on, that's already primed and it can start work on warming that up. If that's the first thing you do on site, by the time you're ready, your water should be nice and warm and ready to use. Going back up to the control panel, you've then got your little door light, which is just uh, switched there, um, which is just obviously on the outside of the vehicle. And then underneath, you've got your buttons, which will um, which will obviously show you uh, your levels. So firstly, you've got your leisure battery uh, level. Click that, 
and that will show now as you can see we're at 50 percent because i've not i'm not plugged in or anything but when you plug into mains electric that will go up all the way to 100 percent you've then got your vehicle battery level which is it's not far off 100 percent there um so that's next up and then finally you've got your fresh water level so we've got a bit of fresh in at the moment uh, i've actually got full uh, fresh water tank uh, as you can see when your wastewater is full uh, if you've not done that as i say uh, if you've not left it open you'll get a red flashing light on this little button here uh, or little icon rather that is obviously an indicator that you of course need to drain down the fresh water tank whilst we're on the topic of them drain down points as well as i say you have got one more which is your uh, boiler drain down points what i recommend is when you are traveling home um, just simply drain everything down and leave all your tanks open because all the vibrations of the road will get that residual water out if you drain the majority down obviously on site but then leave the the residual water um, will be left in so leave them tanks open as you're traveling home that vibration of the road will get everything out for you next up we've then got your truma control panel so you've got your button in the middle everything uh, below the line is really what you what you want to select so if I go to this I have just reset this system so we may need to go back to it uh, in just a minute because it's just resetting um, by the looks of it so we may have to come back to this but everything below the line uh, when it finally loads up is what you in essence um, want to select but as I say we'll give this five minutes because as I say I've only just um, reset the system on this so we'll move on so as I say we'll come back to your heating um, in here you've got your kitchen um, obviously we spoke about priming your system but on here you've got your hob you've got electric hob and two gas your oven and griller below that and the nice thing with this is you've got plenty of storage as well in the vehicle so there's loads got even more down here as well you'll also notice you've got two 230 volt sockets which will obviously only work when you're hooked up to mains electric and then you've got your drop down bed icon here um, this is a button you can switch it obviously up or down depending on how you want to use it your drop down bed obviously drops directly over your lounge uh, to obviously make that and make sure that that works in the top left hand side you see where that key is this is where your box is um, and you can simply turn that and that will basically engage the system once that is on come back to your button Make sure that the entire area is, is clear and then you can simply click that button like so and drop the bed into place. That will stop automatically and then your drop down bed is good to go. This is obviously working off the 12 volt currently um, so you have no issues in using this when you're wild camping. So I'll just send that up. When it's up at the top the lights will come back on and that will indicate that it's right at the top. Coming back over to this as well, you have got a manual override in there. Uh, that plastic panel comes off and your manual override winder can simply slot into there. Moving through, you've got your telly which is up at the top. That's your Avtex TV, which is obviously 12 volt uh, conveniently. Uh, and you've also got a bit more storage up here with your grill pan and things in there. Next up is your fridge. So, I'll open up the fridge now. This fridge is a Dometic fridge, and in here you've got your control panel. For your control panel, you've firstly got your on button there, that will obviously turn everything on uh, should you need it. You've then got uh, your options of, of what you want to power the fridge with. This is a three way system, so there's three ways to power it. You've got 230 volt electric, you can run it off your fridge, uh, your, your fridge, <laughs> your gas, sorry, uh, and then you can also run it off your 12 volt leisure battery. You've got an A button here which will which stands for auto and luckily that will automatically assign whichever fuel you've got um, to power the fridge basically so when you're on site you're going to be running it off 230 volts when you're wild camping you're running it off gas and when you're on um, transit so when you're traveling you'll run it off obviously your 12 volt leisure battery a lot of people think that they can run the gas off uh, sorry they can run the the battery uh, the fridge off the leisure battery when they're stationary and they've got nothing working that isn't the case because uh, if it was it simply depletes all the leisure battery or all its power so it'll only allow you to run the fridge off 12 volt when you're traveling because in this vehicle you've got a built-in alternator which will send power 
to your fridge from the vehicle battery. Um, but as I say, the nice thing with this, you have got an A button which will automatically assign whichever your fuel, whichever fuel you've got um, at the time. Next up, click that, that's for your temperature, so you can change the temperature, you can adjust that just by clicking it. And then you have got a reset button here, should you ever need it, you can just hold that down. You'll only need that if you've by accident knocked it off auto and selected a fuel that you've not got. Uh, just one more thing on the fridge as well, uh, your freezer is up at the top, I recommend, the, the fridge does a brilliant job at maintaining the temperature, so I recommend putting frozen things in the freezer, uh, which is already frozen, and cool things in the fridge and it'll just help keep that cool. Behind your telly you can see you've got your remote uh, for the telly to operate and you've also got your aerial which has been fitted. Your aerial in here you've got your little um, uh, signal finder. Click that on, make sure that that's on for your aerial to work and obviously you'll need your 12 volt uh, panel to be on for this to operate. At the moment we're getting a green light as you can see which indicates that you're getting a good signal. As it goes amber and red obviously the signal is getting worse. To increase the signal, you can simply unscrew this, push this uh, this um, uh, arm up, and then tighten that into position to get a better signal. And you will also notice you can obviously turn it to, you know, uh, change the head of the aerial, the direction of it. And you have got an arm on the bottom, which will allow you this bit here, uh, which will allow you to wind the head of the aerial to tilt the head of it again to increase uh, your range and better your signal. And in the back you've obviously got your two beds, uh, underneath here you've got a really good bit of storage as well, uh, along with storage all along the top as well. So next to your bedroom area, you can see that you've got your toilet and your shower. Uh, your shower um, is, as I've mentioned before really, uh, you still need to prime that, but it works the exact same as a normal shower. You need obviously your pump on for that to operate. You've got these bits, uh, this, uh, this uh, panel in here, which will pull across uh, and connect uh, to basically uh, we'll connect to, to there actually this this piece this magnetic strip and we'll uh, block off that from obviously getting wet and then you've got these shower doors which will obviously turn this whole area into a shower cubicle. Uh, the main thing that I need to talk to you about in here is obviously your toilet. As I mentioned on the outside you've got a blade on the toilet which you can close and open depending on when you're using it. The blade that I keep referring to is this piece of plastic here. At the moment it's closed, push that away and that actually opens uh, the cassette. Now, you need to open this cassette when you're using it, of course, so all the waste can drop into the cassette. And then using the blue button on the top there, click that, that will activate your flush. It's worth knowing that you do need your pump on that for that to operate. Once you've uh, done that, close the blade uh, and that will stop any odours from escaping. And it'll also get you into the habit of having that closed. So come uh, the time when you need to remove the cassette, that's all closed and it's good to go. Going back up to your flush, as I mentioned, you do need your pump on for that to operate and you will get a red light on there when the cassette is full. Obviously, when you get that, just empty it straight away. So moving away from uh, the bathroom area, uh, obviously, you're back into your lounge here. Uh, this table does uh, move. It just it pulls across and obviously rotates. And you've got that red lever there, which is just underneath. Flick that up, put a bit of weight on it, and that table can drop should you need it to. Coming over to your Truma system, this is now loaded back up, uh, as I say, just because it needed a reset. Um, underneath, everything below the line is what you want to select. So, click that. You can see in here, you've got your vehicle's temperature, so you can select it to 30 degrees. You've then got your water temperature, so you can have it on Eco, Hot or Boost. Eco is approximately 40 degrees, so you'll obviously have that when you're having a shower. Uh, that hot is 60 degrees and boost will boost uh, and concentrate on heating the fresh water tanks. Uh, so rather than heating the actual you know, vehicle itself, it'll heat um, the fresh water. Next up, you've then got your fuel. So you can run it off EL2, EL1, Mix2 or Mix1. So depending on how, you, how you're using it. If you're obviously on site, you're going to run it off uh, EL1. Um, uh, sorry, EL2. If your site is is just, uh, should we say, um, you know, lacking in terms of power, you may need to stick it on either mix two or mix one, or pure, purely, you know, fuel. Um, mix one and mix two is a mixture of uh, your diesel and your electric. 
uh, and then diesel is obviously the fuel um, is obviously diesel and that will just simply run it off diesel should you need it um, when you're wild camping finally you've then got your fan so you've got vent at the moment because I've not selected any of the options but this will give you the option of um, I believe uh, eco high or boost uh, and that will just obviously intensify the fan. Boost will do the same as it did on the water, but just work vice versa. So instead of heating the water in that case, it will heat the actual vehicle and concentrate on that. Underneath here, you've got a timer, so you can set a timer of when you want the, the, the heating to come on. You've then got your obviously clock that you can change. And then in here, you've got your settings. The main thing that you need to know is your reset button. The only time you need to reset it is say for example you've ever you know get an error code now that often happens when you've selected a fuel that you haven't got that's probably what happened before when I had to reset it that there was a fuel selected that you hadn't you hadn't got because obviously um, so with that in mind if you ever get an error code just go into that reset click reset and that will then reset the entire system as you saw earlier it will come back on but you do need to wait about 20 minutes for that to fully reset to then turn that off all you need to do is hold that button and then it will eventually say off there you are and then you're good to go now the drain down point is the final thing that I've uh, I've left out for for today if you like uh, and that is located in your garage I wanted to leave that to last because it's very important it links to your boiler and that as I say is located in the garage which I'll show you now so located in the garage as you can see in this cutout you've got your drain down point for your fresh water uh, for your boiler drain down point this black valve is your drain down it's quite difficult to see on the video so I can obviously show you this on handover that's not a problem to drain this down because at the moment it is actually closed all you need to do is simply flick the diamond on the top and the blue tab on the side which you can hardly see uh, will flick out and you probably heard that draining down to close it you then need to turn the diamond so it's back into that position and there's a blue tab on the side here i can feel it. it's a little bit difficult to see on the video but all you need to do is click that in and once that is flush that is the system sealed now this reacts to temperature it's a quick drain down point uh, it's a fail safe rather so if you forget to drain down the boiler when it gets to a certain temperature you can flick that it will flick automatically and drain down but do get into the habit of obviously draining that down now what might happen if you've not used the vehicle for a while or you're using the vehicle in uh, you know cold conditions you may go to close this so you'll turn the, the diamond back like that and the blue tab you go to push in but because this system reacts to temperature you may push that in and it'll keep pinging out the reason for that is as I say it's, sens it's sensitive to temperature and it's in fear that you're obviously going to uh, uh, freeze the system so with that in mind go into the vehicle run your heating for a little bit your vehicle heating that is not your water heating your vehicle heating and that will obviously help warm that area up and after about 30 minutes you can then flick that switch in and then you're good to go okie dokie so that's the handover video done on the titanium 627 ga i hope you enjoyed